Hello everyone, I'm Sebastian Y, and this is Foundations of Economics. In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of the Consumer Price Index. The Consumer Price Index, or CPI, is a measure of the overall price of the goods and services bought by a typical consumer. The CPI offers us an alternative way to look at how the price level is changing over time and also to calculate inflation rates, alongside the GDP deflator that we looked at previously. To calculate the CPI, we determine a fixed basket of goods that a typical consumer purchases in a given period of time. A common period of time to use is one year. We will then use the prices in each year to calculate the total price of the basket in each year. That will give us a sense for the cost of living for a typical consumer year to year. For an example, let's return to our small island country of Santa Maria, which produces and consumes two goods, rum and bananas. Here I have data from three different years, 2018, 2019, and 2020, on the price of rum and the price of bananas. These are the same prices I used back when we calculated GDP using the same example. Suppose that in one year, a typical consumer in Santa Maria buys two units of rum and five units of bananas. This is our basket of goods. If we look at our basket, we can see the typical consumer consumes a lot more bananas than they do rum. If you remember the total production numbers back from our GDP videos, the quantities of rum and bananas were relatively similar to each other. That suggests that this country probably exports quite a bit of its rum. The first thing we need to do is calculate the total price of the basket in each year. Starting with 2018, we have 20 price of rum times 2 quantity of rum plus 5 price of bananas times 5 units of bananas for a total price of the basket of 40 plus 25 is 65. Next, for the basket price in 2019, we'll take the new price of 25, but remember we are holding the basket constant, plus the new price times the original quantity of bananas, which is 50 plus 75, which is 125. And finally, for 2020. We're going to take our rum price of 30 times the quantity of 2 plus banana price of 25 times 5 quantity and we get 60 plus 125 is 185. We can see here that the price of the basket is going up over time which suggests that the overall price level in the country is going up as well. To calculate the consumer price index or CPI in a given time period we take the basket price in year T and we divide it by the basket price in a chosen base year. As with the GDP deflator, we will then multiply by 100. I will again use 2019 as our base year, but the decision is arbitrary. For the CPI in 2018, we have a basket price of 65, a base year basket price of 125, and multiply it by 100. This gives us a CPI of 52. For 2019, we have a basket price of 125, but since 2019 is also our base year, that's going to stay the same on the denominator. Multiply by 100, we just get 100. The CPI in the base year is always going to be 100. Finally, to calculate the CPI for 2020, we have a basket price of 185 divided by the same from the base year times 100, and this is going to give us 148. Here we can see the CPI is going up over time, meaning that the price level and also the cost of living are going up over time. Let's compare these back with the GDP deflator numbers that we got before. The GDP deflators that we got for each year were 60, 100, and 140. We can see that the CPI is going up faster than the GDP deflator. 
They are two different ways of looking at the price level, and they won't always give you the same result. The difference is that the GDP deflator is based off of production, and the CPI is based off of consumption of a typical consumer. In our example, the consumers buy a lot of bananas relative to rum, and since the price of bananas was going up faster than rum, we can see that the CPI is going up faster than the GDP deflator based off of overall production. This is what happened in our example, but this is not always the case. The CPI might be going up faster or slower than the GDP deflator, depending on the situation. As with the GDP deflator, we can use the CPI to calculate inflation rates. We define the inflation rate using the CPI very similarly to how we did with the deflator. The inflation rate in time period T, or year T in our case, is the CPI in period T minus the CPI in the previous year, T minus 1, divided by the original CPI in T minus 1, and we'll multiply that by 100%. Again, we cannot calculate an inflation rate for 2018 here because we do not know anything about 2017. So we're going to have to start with calculating the inflation rate for 2019. The CPI in 2019 was 100, the CPI in 2018 was 52, and then we divide that by the 52. That's going to give us an inflation rate of approximately 92%. We can do the same thing for 2020. The CPI in 2020 is 148. The CPI in 2019 is 100. We divide it by the original CPI of 100, and that's going to come out to 48%. Since these numbers are positive, that tells us that we have inflation, an increase in the overall price level year to year. It is possible to have a negative inflation rate. That means the price levels are going down. This is what we call deflation. Before we move on, let's talk about a few potential problems with using the CPI as a measure of the cost of living. The first potential problem is that the CPI assumes the basket stays constant across time. In our example, people might react to the rapidly increasing price of bananas by consuming fewer bananas and more rum instead but we do not capture that effect at all. As a result, our CPI might have overestimated the cost of living increase because it assumed that that banana consumption stays the same. Of course, we know from the law of demand that might not actually be the case. A related issue is the CPI ignores the introduction of new products. As new products arrive on the market, consumers buy them in place of older, sometimes obsolete products. Suppose the basket was based on consumption from 1990. The basket from 1990 might include such goods as VHS tapes, while consumers would have no interest in those today. Consumers today would buy something like a smartphone, which was not possible 30 years ago. Fixing the basket to a certain period of time can make the comparisons across large time spans a bit difficult to do. Just like our GDP data, the Bureau of Economic Analysis calculates the United States CPI, and this goes back to 1960. The data that I've provided to you is also collected from the St. Louis Fed. Taking a look at our data set here, we have our annual CPI going all the way back to 1960. For comparison, I've also included the nominal GDP and real GDP so we can compare the CPI with the GDP deflator. Let's scroll down to find our base year, and we can see that that is 2015 because we have a CPI of 100. Generally speaking, before 2015, we have a CPI that is lower than that, and after that, we have a CPI that's higher than that, and that's because, generally speaking, we have inflation year to year. For comparison, let's calculate the GDP deflator for each year. To do that, we take our nominal GDP, divide it by our real GDP, and multiply that by 100. And let's copy that all the way down. As you can see here, we have a base year of 2012 for the real GDP. That's not the same year as with the CPI, but that's not a problem. We're only using the CPIs to compare with other CPIs, and we're using the deflators to compare with other deflators. So it doesn't matter if we have a different base year. Next, I'm going to calculate the inflation rate using the CPI. 
Remember, we cannot do that for the first year that we have. We have to start at the second year. And to do that, we take our CPI from the current year minus the CPI in the previous year, divide that by the CPI in the previous year, and multiply by 100. Copy that all the way down. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and calculate the inflation rate using the deflator. The formula is exactly the same. We take our deflator in the current year minus the deflator in the previous year, divide by the deflator in the previous year, and multiply by 100. Copying that down, we can see that the inflation rate as calculated using the CPI and the inflation rate calculated using the GDP deflator are similar but not the same. We can see back in the 1960s there was a fairly constant rate of inflation of between 1 and 2 percent, and in the late 60s through the 70s that gets quite a bit higher. In some cases, such as 1965, the GDP deflators inflation rate calculation is higher than the CPI one, but in other cases, like 1979, the inflation rate calculated by CPI is higher than the deflator one. But in general, when the CPI inflation rate is relatively high, the GDP deflator inflation rate is also relatively high. If we scroll down the list here, we can see that in almost every year, the inflation rate, no matter how we calculate it, is positive except for one right here in 2009, where the inflation rate is calculated by the CPI goes into the negatives, although it does not do that for the deflator. The graph here compares the inflation rates over time using both methods. You can see that they generally follow similar patterns, although the CPI one is a bit more volatile than the GDP deflator calculation. In the next video, we're going to use the CPI to make a few more calculations.